Hey everybody, in this video we're going to go through the Cheskel's Caro Khan course, specifically studying some of the lines from the Panel of Attack chapter. I won't be studying all the lines, but I'm doing this as preparation for future games where I might be facing the Panel of Attack. So what we're going to do is just kind of go through these lines in Chessable, talk through a little bit of the text, and it also lets you guys know uh, some of our recommendations in this Caro Khan course. All right, so here we go. Five knight c3, we're gonna play knight c6. And I note here that in the past, I've played g6 in quite a bit of my chess career. But for the repertoire, we're gonna go knight c6. And we're gonna try to make a blockade on this d5 square against an isolated pawn on d4. All right, so now after bishop to g5, um, here what we're gonna do is we're gonna play bishop to e6, putting the question on this c4 pawn. And now we're recommending g6. Um, if white plays c5, that's going to that's going to transpose into another line in the course. So after bishop takes, we take back with the pawn. And now bishop to g7. And you can see here what's happening is we're lining up our forces on the d4 pawn. We have the bishop attacking and the knights also attacking. And now here you can see in the text we're threatening bishop to g4, pinning this f3 knight to the queen, and that puts even more pressure on this d4 pawn. So something that we really try to do in the Carol Khan course is talk about the positional ideas and the strategies. In this line in particular, we're focusing on this weak pawn on d4. So now we're going to pin the knight with a threat of capturing on f3 right away. So we trade on f3, again, focus on this d4 pawn with the move f5. So one nice thing with this Carol Khan course is you get the full PGN and instructions on how to upload it to Chessable. All right, so now that Chessable has taught me all the moves for the first time through, I need to try to remember the moves. So here we're going to go knight c6. After bishop to g5, we wanted to play bishop to e6, putting the question to this pawn. After knight to f3, what did we want to play here? I'm already forgetting the move order. What did we want to play here? g6. And that one was a little bit unnatural for me, but then hopefully the next time I see it becomes easier. So the idea was bishop g7 eyeing this pawn. And for some reason I was thinking there was another move inserted there prior to playing g6. So here we castle out of the pin. And now when we see white castle, let's go for this knight on f3, applying even more pressure to the d4 pawn. We trade, play f5, and now we get to do it one more time. So now it should be a little bit quicker even. Once you play it the third time through, And one thing I was thinking before I started recording this video today is I'm a little bit tired. So I was like, well, hopefully I don't mess up too many moves. Because sometimes on Chessable, if you're a little bit sleepy, not on your A game, you know, you might have to retry a couple moves in a variation. There we go. Now, one thing that we do at the end of all of these lines, my screen cuts it off a little bit on the screen share, but we do tell you a plan at the end of every single line in our course. So here we say our plan is rook to b8, rook to e8, queen to a5, and we're going to try to attack the weaknesses in white's camp, which are probably going to be these two pawns. All right, so let's go to the next lesson. c5, we're going with g6 again, so very consistent. And now since the c5 pawn is here, it says in the text we don't need a6 at all. We just go for the fiend ghetto. And now we're going to castle, again, trying to apply the pressure to d4, and bishop to g4. So another thing that we do in our course, we try to make the lines all very consistent and easy to learn. So we don't want you to have to memorize a ton of theory, we want you to understand the ideas. And when you understand the ideas, it makes the games that much easier to play. Alright, so here, note there was never a capture on 
uh, f6 where we played e takes back. We now have the bishop and knight still on the board, so we're going to play knight d7. And the plan here after knight to d7 is rook to e8, get the queen out of this pin, um, and then we're going to play for the e5 break. And what we do when we play e5 is we hit this d4 pawn, which also guards the pawn on c5. So it's a nice strategic way to really chip away at this white center. And we're trying to play for the initiative with the black pieces. This is the Carol Khan, um, but we want to play for the initiative. All right, so here we go. Second attempt. So we're in g6. White is not taking, and they haven't put anything on b5 yet. We're just in time. Castle out of this pin. And now the move is bishop to g4, pinning the knight. Take back. Take on f3, knight d7, preparing for e5. All right, here we go. Third attempt. Castle out of the pin. Pin their knight. Take back. Take the knight. Knight d7, and e5 is coming next, which is at the bottom of this text that you can't quite see. All right, here we go. Third line. So now we're seeing a rare move by white, knight to f3. Or I'm sorry, knight to f3 is not a rare move. We're recommending a rare move. And this is one of the coolest findings, I think, in this whole chapter of the course. Um, what we're doing here is we're kind of making white uh, pick their setup. So they either have to like move the dark square bishop out to g5, play bishop e2, uh, or move their c pawn. a6 is a very useful move in almost every line. And this is really flexible, and it's kind of confusing for white. Like, they actually want us to play bishop g4 or d takes c, because then it makes their plan a little bit easier. We're going to play this really flexible and rare move, a6. And another thing that we do in this course, too, is we kind of look for lines that aren't necessarily the most popular lines, um, so that hopefully the game is more in your court than your opponent's. So here now we see this kind of cool move, bishop e6, with a discovered attack on the c4 bishop. And here we're showing you a common mistake at club level. So another thing we do in this course, it's not all based on Grandmaster games. We're showing you moves that you're likely to see, you know, between like 1000 and 2200 level. So we go through common mistakes and show how to punish them as well. So here we see a blunder with queen b3. Our recommendation is knight to a5. And white is going to lose a piece for two pawns. After queen a4 check. We get the fork. Uh, white has to sacrifice, and here I mentioned that the weakness on d4 gives us a three to three and a half point advantage according to Stockfish. So let's just see how this can play out. We have this immediate check, and we're going to show the trickiest line for white. So we're going to block with the bishop, bring that knight back, and there's this nice little tactic hitting the queen. So after knight takes knight, we take the queen, and then we take the bishop. All right, so let's try this again. Here's our rare move, a6. We take back on d5, bishop to e6 with the discovered attack on the bishop. We see the queen b3 mistake, get our fork in, we take back, block the check, and bring the knight back, hitting the queen. So using tactics, um, oh, I almost made a mistake right there. Using tactics, we're able to get this line to, to lead to a three and a half point advantage. And let's just take a material count here. Two rooks each, uh, bishop and knight each. We have the extra bishop, and white has two extra pawns, but they're sitting on the second rank, and the d4 pawn is a weakness. And if you look at this knight on b7, that knight is almost trapped. So white does have to figure out What's the safest way to get the knight out without losing another pawn? So here we go again. Third attempt, a6, knight takes d5. Discovered attack on the bishop. Fork, fork, take back, block the check. And then what was the line here? Knight back, hitting the queen. And the nice thing too in the game, in your games, if you see a move that you don't remember from the course, 
most likely it's an inferior move or equal to the moves in the course. So we do also show you kind of the stronger moves. Um, so as soon as you see your opponent play a move you don't recognize, that's when you can go into a deeper think and try to figure out, is there a way to punish that move? So that was one of the longer lines in this chapter, 16 moves, but I think it was a good one. And it highlights kind of the trickiness of a6 when we saw white play the queen out to b3. That's a very natural looking move queen to b3, but it's already a blunder. So if we see this in the game, nine moves in and pretty much we're already in a winning position. We just have to convert. All right, let's do another one. So here we had um, the bishops lined up and now white retreated, bishop to b3. And we're gonna play knight to a5, threatening to capture the bishop. Bishop c2, g6. So one thing to note is that bishop on e6 blocks our pawn. So oftentimes we want the dark square bishop to fee and kettle. So then here, after white castles, um, I note here that when white plays knight to g5, we should consider knight takes c3, followed by moving this light square bishop. So now let's show what happens if they go for knight g5. And if knight takes e6, we're trading queens and then winning this d4 pawn in the end. So that won't be good for white. And here, bishop to d5 safely getting away from the attack of this knight. And you can see here in the text, we give you a pretty good explanation. Our plan is kingside castle, followed by rook c8, followed by h6, kicking this knight on g5, and white has these hanging pawns here. And one thing to note about hanging pawns is when they're not side by side, they're really easy to blockade. So we're going to blockade those hanging pawns on these light squares. You see our knights eyeing c4, our bishop's nicely placed on d5, rook coming to c8, um, even a move like b5 could be played, and we have this Fianchetto bishop pointing right at the pawn, so there's a lot of weaknesses here in the white position. This is a very dynamic position, and we're definitely playing for the win. So that's the end of this line. All right, so let's try to remember this. Bishop to b3, knight a5, hitting the bishop. Now we need to get this dark square bishop out. And here we show knight g5 with the knight takes c3 line. Park the bishop on d5. Another nice thing about putting these re repertoires into chessable, um, chessable has spaced repetition. So if you get a move wrong, it's going to show you that move more often. And as you get the moves right more and more often, you'll see them less. So it's a pretty efficient way to study our course. Um, and another nice thing about our course that I didn't mention is it's not a ton of lines. So some of the courses that you'll see out there, opening books that you buy, uh, you might have to memorize or you're taught a thousand different lines. Our course is around 100 lines. There's nine chapters or ten chapters and each one is about ten lines. So we kind of wanted each chapter to represent about one percent of what you'll see in your games. So it's like a very practical size course. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to use Chessable to learn all the lines in the course. But then what I like to do is I create chess-based files and I put in my own lines that aren't in the course. So when I see different things from my opponent, I try to figure out, is that line worthwhile to add to my own notes? And if it is, then I'll add them. If it's not, I'll just try to remember in my head what was the way to punish their move order. Um, maybe they made a mistake early on and that's why it wasn't in the course. And then the other thing to note is we do have some additional bonus files. There's not a lot of files right now with the Carocon, but we're planning on adding more um, annotated games. Uh, there's a whole Carocon playlist. I'll put a card up in the YouTube video. Go in there and watch all of our Carocon videos. Like I've answered a lot of different questions that we receive, and you can put Carocon questions in the comments as well, um, and I'll definitely get to them. So I think we'll wrap up uh, this session for today. Please like the video and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And make sure to check out our CaroCon course in the description. We've gotten a ton of good feedback on the CaroCon course. I've really been super happy with uh, everyone's responses. And um, make sure to tell your friends about the Chess Goals channel too. So still a pretty small channel. Uh, we're trying to grow. 
and we have a Discord as well. Um, check the links in the description. So thanks for watching everyone, we'll see you in the next video.